everyone. Today I want to take you to a journey of a wonderland, a wonderland of interesting Turkish Anatolian equipments, cooking equipments, which some of them are ancient, some of them are like are 100 to 50 years old. The newest probably is about 50 years old. And I want to talk a little bit about why they are used and how they're used. I used to come here when I was 15. My house was a little down and when I didn't have school or when I was skipping school, I used to walk here and there was another 15 year old in the shop. He's called Kazım and he's an old friend and I didn't know much, but I have learned the old cutting boards, old Anatolian floor tables that are used for eating, where they net the dough, how they rest the dough. These are equipments that they used to use. And I have learned these equipments from here. And I want to first take you to the shops, then I'm going to take you to a, almost like a valley, which are full of these. Okay, come. By the way, you can say, Refika, I want to have a recipe. And I am also going to involve a recipe on this and we're going to cook together. Erişte, and it's an ancient Turkish pasta method. And I'm going to make the erişte from scratch with the equipments that I found here. This is going to be how they used to do it maybe a thousand years ago. This is the shop. For example, this is a box where they mix the dough. It's called hamur teknesi and where they mix the dough and let it rise. This is the one. First rising of the dough is done here. The green ones are usually for the olives and the olive oil, the yellow ones and the, sometimes the brown ones are for the butter. Depending on where it comes from, for example, these weird colored brown and green ones are usually from Gallipoli region, Çanakkale region. Less colored ones are from the inner Anatolia and etc. So come again. This is a sieve, for example, guys, and it's great. And this is where they, you know, separate the lumps and parts from here. Elek, it's called elek. It's a sieve as well, no? It's another kind of sieve, kind of. Yes, you're right. Again, for the bread, this looks like a wood, but actually it's clay. And it's amazing, it's really heavy. I remember using a version of these. In Turkey, the water comes to your house with cars and this is how they used to bring the water to the houses with these bottles and you'll bring your own bottle and they will pour it to yours and that's how people used to carry the drinking water. We haven't been drinking water through the taps for ages as long as I know myself. Let me show you this, doorknobs. Bahar is very much interested in doorknobs always. What's your favorite thing in here Bahar? <laughs> we hope. I believe they add dimension to the room. For example, this is a cutting board that they colored and it's so nice. And there are so many different beautiful things. All jams. So let's go to the valley. This is just like an entree. And I'm going to show you something totally amazing. These are kind of big cubes. Hopefully it's called cruises. We're not so sure. But these are probably kind of like the oldest refrigerators. Burak said they are the old plastic bags or chuval. They used to put the wheat, oils, water is also preserved in a cool way. When you like dig the soil and bury this until the head and there would be a lid on top. It's so easy and it's very nice to preserve and keeps cool for a very long time. So these are the oldest, in a way, kind of preserve methods before the refrigerator was around. These are the wheels of Khan, which is the cars before automobile was invented. One of the first things that I bought from Kazım was actually these. It's a baby bed. Nice. It's a yalak. Not baby, not for drinking water. This is for mixing the flour. To make bread is so important. When after mixing the flour in big batches, you divide it into smaller ones to make the bread. Then you divide the dough into smaller pieces and let it rise for a while. And this is where they used to rest. Now they use individual baskets to do that. Before, they were using these. <laughs> but this is like, think of it as like a baker and bigger versions. Dough mixtures have different variations like these as well. Smaller ones. These are small cutting boards, as you can see. In different shapes, in different sizes. I think they Nailed some new stuff on the side as well, like this. 
another of my favorites. These are, again, better cutting boards. Look at this. Look at this. Ah. With feet, like this. Is it to eat? It's to prepare. It's like the so. countertop. She would sit on the floor and then like, do the preparation, the quality and the age is understood through this. For example, this is nailed, but as you can see, these are carved from the big wood, one piece. That makes the difference because to carve such a thing, you need a big log. But to do this, you need a smaller and thin log. In Anatolia, there are always different kinds of cheese sandu. Women are given with clothes, bedspreads, etc. And these are carried in these kind of boxes. These are Köy sofrası, which is to eat. It's the round table. People used to eat around. Actually, some people still love eating on the floor. I believe it's really healthy in terms of the distance between you and the food is more and you lie on the floor and each time you have to like bend and get some things. So you feel full much earlier than you feel filled when you're on the table where your distance is very small and you don't have to press your stomach each time you eat. So this is like Unfortunately, on my father's time in the midst of Anatolia, first men used to eat it and what's left over, they like get up and when they are finished, women sit on the same table to the same plate and they would continue from the leftovers of what men ate. So that's very unfair. That's, that, that unfair story is always in me. So I love Kyrgyz a lot, but sometimes I feel weird about it. It's kind of amazing. Maybe thousands of these are lying here. And they have been doing this for about 25 years, maybe more. And these are the old pestle and mortars. Some of them are for garlic, some of them are for different stuff. Again, different kinds of pestle and mortars. These are, for example, when you're making grape, when you're making molasses, you squeeze the grapes and then the water is collected of the grape juice and it goes from here and then through a sieve, you clean it and then you make Let's say wine, you make molasses, you make different stuff. These are yayık. As you remember, in the video while we were making butter, we have to shake it for a very long time. A ropes from two sides are up and then you just like push it back and forth. After a while, the water and the oil separate and then you get the butter out. This is another version of yayık where you push back and forth, back and forth. You kind of beat it, actually, it's like shaking it. I have to clean my hands first and then start cooking. Now, we're gonna make erişte. Erişte is Turkish pasta, and Turkish pasta has been around for ages, probably. It actually might be the ancestor of the pasta. As you know, the wheat was first found in Anatolia seven, eight thousand years ago. And this is an erişte cutting board. What it is, is you open the dough here, you cut it here and you put it all in and use it as a one thing together. So, well, how are we gonna do it? I have here half a kilo of flour. If it's a stronger flour, better. I'm gonna put 150 milliliters of water in the middle without any yeast. And I'm also gonna add an egg and a teaspoon of salt. First, I'm gonna mix it like this. I might need to add a bit of water. Allah. Your desk is beautiful, by the way. Hmm? Let me see. It's, it's the, an old door. My stall are two big cups to wash the grapes. This is gonna be a thick, a kind of stiff dough. So the mixture is about 30% of water to flour. Do you sell anything? No, shall I? If you want to buy it from Etsy, please write it down. I can do it. What is this? It's R2D2! Ah! R2D5. <laughs> this is actually a kettle and a stove together. As you continue kneading, like it comes together and this is like a hard dough and it's cleaning the sides of the plate. How old is that? That's important. Probably about 150 years old. Oh. Sorry. We have been knitting the stove for about eight minutes now. It's kind of hard. First, the dough looks like a leg with a lot of cellulite, but then it starts to become more smooth. So I'm gonna cut this in half like this and use both of my hands. And then maybe in one minute, it's gonna be ready. 
You have to deserve that carbohydrate. We are going to deserve it. Now, because it's really thick and hard to open, we have done the dough, but we're going to let it rest for about half an hour. And it's going to loosen itself a bit. The gluten will start to work on the dough. And then I can open to make an irishte. Damn cloth goes in. Feel the wind in your hands. Feel the wind in your face. Oh. This is teamwork. Yes, sir. This yes. Man, this is how we do it. Actually, carbohydrates wasn't something bad, like wheat is a vegetable, but the DNA of the wheat used to be eight chromosomes. Now it's 45. And this gluten thing is coming from the number of DNAs. Very recently, a man who doesn't want to outspoke his name, he found an old cube and inside he found some seeds and he planted those seeds and found that wheat with eight chromosomes and now they are growing it and it's very weather aversive and uh, so good. Maybe it might save the world from, I don't know, it's English, could yeah. be. The oldest genetically modified thing is wheat. Yeah. On the sides, as you can see, there are yellow spots and the reason why is because it was windy, the dough got dry a bit and when the dough dries and when you open it, you're gonna have these kind of things. But if you use the damn cloth, not like me, in a damn way, it's a nicer way, it's better. Now. The dough is done. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pet the extra flour from the yufka now. This is important. And this has to stay and dry for about two to three hours. You can dry it in any place you like. It shouldn't be very moist. I have prepared one that is already rested. Here it is. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to try to cut this in half and Cut this in half. You made lasagnas? Huh? Kind of. Same technique actually. So almost same size. As you can see, it's quite dry now. And quite tasty. Now, put everything like this. I'm going to put my hands. And then here, small pieces like this. These are now the small pasta. So, the sides are quite tasty, so you can eat it like this. This is ready to be cooked. If you want the dry erişte, what you do, you open this on a damp cloth, or in the old days it used to be newspaper because it kind of also sucks, but now you know, I don't find it very hygienic. If you dry it for two more days, it's going to be really like the dried pasta, and you can like put it and reserve it any way you like. If you want the pasta with beetroot, Instead of putting water, have a beetroot puree and you're going to come up with a purple erişte. But this is the basic one. If you want to cook this immediately, we're going to cook it and that's what we're going to do. It's going to be to the boiling water. Now, we have the boiling water here. R2D5 is going to cook for us. Here on the side, actually, we have our tea. I'm just going to put the, these inside like that. My ones are big. On the side, Furkan also made some. These are smaller, some more, because we're kind of crowded. Fresh air made me really hungry. The tea is here, as you can see, uh -uh. and the water is here. Now, let's start making the rest of the pasta. Here we have some garlic. You want garlic, Bahar? Sure, 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 sure. Okay, a lot of garlic. And these are fresh garlic of this season. And I'm not gonna like thinly chop them. I'm going to thickly chop them like this. I want them al dente too. Mm -hmm. Now, olive oil here. Oh, it's really hot. We have to be quite fast, huh? We haven't been shooting with Ina for a month now. Did you miss me, Ina? Yes. Yes. Now, the sides are not so hot, so I'm just pushing them there. Tantuni technique. These are some more walnuts. Now it's smelling gorgeously, incredibly nice. I want the walnuts to like have their own oil taken out. And can I make it a bit hot? Okay. Red pepper, big chunks again. Okay. Walnuts are done. And the pasta is here. Okay, we cheated. There was another stove there. So we put the pasta. So I'm gonna make it 
Two, two and a half, not more. And I'm going to put a lot of, this is called zahtar kikik. It's going to be here. And nice, huh? I'm just going to leave the middle because it's very hot there. Cheese is coming here. The dog also wants some from the cheese, I believe. I'm going to put big chunks. Yeah. Okay, this is almost done. Finally, the water of the erishte is going to be mixed with the cheese and it's going to have a cream effect. So a bit of pasta juice makes it incredibly nice. I have to taste it for the salt. Perfect. No salt needed. Some black pepper. All done. So this is it. We are going to eat with the crew who has been waiting for us. Mm. And this is a simple pasta. If you cannot find white cheese, this is white tur Turkish cheese, known as feta in some parts of the world. You cannot even compare feta with white Turkish cheese, I'm sorry. Says the master. Everyone. <music> 10 out of? 10 what? out of 10. <laughs> Hope you like it, guys. Mm. Cheese effect. Have I cooked this for you before? No, not really. Actually, this is one of the recipes from my first book, Beyaz Painter, Works in Miracles. <laughs> back, 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 back. <laughs> this is it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Hope you like the Erishte. Hope you make it at home. Lots of love. Don't forget to subscribe. And like. And, like. and leave a comment. And leave a comment.